Nice jam! Greetings, I'm Chappers. I'm the captain. We have some stunning looking, beautiful Gibsons here for you today. Yes. Look at that. And it's look at golden. that. And it's, oh, all, it's all green, green. and green um, gold. So, green and gold. Was that a song? Wait, is it the Was dress? that a Bob Marley song? Can you, is that actually black? No, it's come, 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 a Red, gold, and green. <laughs> Red, yeah. gold, and green. Is that um, because the original colours of Santa Claus were green? Possibly something changed. to do with Santa Claus, or may have been something to do with and then through the influence being of Rastafarian. I have no idea. And that made them gold? Possibly. Oh. Um, look, well done if you have stuck with us all the way through our review of the new 2017 range. This is the final Les Paul uh, video of the range. Um, the probably most informative one about what's new and different in 2017 from 2016 is to go and just watch the first one, the standard versus the traditional. But we'll kind of recap a little bit. Um, so we, the last two guitars that we've got are the Classic and the Studio, which are the two kind of mid-priced ones, or at least some might say uh, mid-priced is a relative J's, term, isn't it? isn't it? But mid-priced as in the Gibson range. They're not the dearest ones in the 2017 range. They're not the cheapest ones in the 2017 range. They are the middle ones. Rob and I have got the classics. Mm. Well, I mean, the first thing you're going to notice if you pick this up is it's heavy. Is it? Heavy, yeah. Yeah, this less so. It's mm. got a lot of weight, but feel it. Does that Ooh. reassure you? You have got a heavier... It reassures um, you. You pick it up and you go, I feel reassured now. This is a, this is a decent yeah. quality instrument. Yeah. What we do with a lot of the Les Pauls on Anderson's websites is we actually weigh each individual one and list it so that, you know, if you're, you know, if you're one of these players that likes a reassuringly heavy Les Paul, you want to go for something that's maybe between, say, nine and ten pounds. And if you're looking for, if you're somebody that likes a, like a lightweight Les Paul, you might look for something that's under nine pounds. You might look for that. That would be a thing um, you could look for. So Lucky Chappers has got the high performance model and uh, there's a lot of electronical wizardry here and also inside because you can assign different knobs to do different things and different kinds of stuff and that's really cool. But I thought it might be fun if while I'm playing Lee has a little twiddle of my knobs. Um, by the way I'm using a Red Dwarf RD1 into a Vert 212, nothing on the floor yet uh, and this is just... I suppose if I'm going to twiddle with the knobs, I should tell people what they do beforehand, otherwise they won't yeah. know. So just quickly, obviously, changing which pickup we're on here, coil tapping the neck pickup, coil tapping the bridge pickup, um, phase reversing the neck pickup so that when they're used together, you get that scooped out kind of Peter Green kind of sound. And then... Inside or outside? Yeah, when again, when we've got both humbuckers together in their coil tapped mode, it's whether or not it's these or these. So quite a lot and actually if you flip the guitar over Rob because we've not actually done this before we took the back plate off this so that you could see inside and you see those five is it five little dip switches or are there six there but using those dip switches uh, if you go to the um, have a look in the description below I'll put one of the links in but if you go to the Gibson website it shows you about a thousand different combinations of, or it tells you what each of those uh, dips which he's doing of course depending on what combination you've got of on or off you've got yeah. hundreds of different uh, very uh, that's subtle good things we like a lot of change. choices when we're yeah out. i mean it's it's i guess that's you know clearly you're not going to be mid song going I'll just flip that over like <laughs> that. but you Someone set, will. the idea is you set your kind of les paul up to be your perfect les paul and then screw the back plate back on and lead it anyway yeah as rob's playing so, let's let's have a little fiddle yeah here we go
I love the uh, in between middle sound, man. Uh, with every with it coil tapped and everything, it sounded like you were making a phone call on your guitar. You that really nasally it's got a kind of. I sound like uh, Les Paul, but worse. You'd never be as good as Les Paul, man. So these are the super classic 57s in the high performance ones. Uh, or actually, at least this is the super classic and the classic 57. And then on the um, non high performance ones, I, I've got just regular classic 57s. I think, what, again, what they're doing throughout the whole range is the high performance model will always have a slightly hotter bridge pickup than the traditional spec model. Let's give them a little touch of gainage though, so I just wound up the dwarf. sort of technically minded viewers could tell us why it is in the middle position with the neck uh, out of phase, or sorry, reverse wound, it sounds like you've got a wah-wah plugged in. And it almost, as you're playing, sounds like you're actually using a wah-wah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's that vocal kind of area, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, anyway. Yeah, nice. So flip the guitar over, Rob, and we'll just, again, <laughs> high performance specifications means you get magic tuners that tune themselves, a slightly wider neck, and the all access heel joint. Just things that make a lot of sense. Yep, flip it over again. We have, and I've completely got this wrong in previous videos, of course, this adjustable zero nut is not made of aluminium, as I've said before, titanium. it is titanium. Yeah. Titanium. I thought you said titanium. Uh, somebody said I said aluminium, which I probably did. They were probably wrong. Um, and you've got aesthetically, obviously, the chrome pickup surrounds, uh, different knobs. Aesthetically or aesthetically? I've always wondered that. Well. I don't know. Aesthetically, <laughs> aesthetically, aesthetically. What if an ass is aesthetically nice? Well, it's, it's, aesthetically. Aesthetically. It's, an, it's an aesthetic ass. Do you know what I found out recently? Because <laughs> I bought a pram because I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a dad be a dad. Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting. Get in. Um, and I bought my first pram and I was telling my friend Joe from Rift City Guitar. I said, I bought my first pram. He went, what? And I went, pram. What are they called prams went, then? What's a pram? And for the first time in my life, I literally didn't know what an American word for something that's English you... was. And I said, a perambulator, a pram, pram. And he went, I have no idea what that is. And it's, they call it a stroller. Yes. Did you go Silver Cross or McLaren? I went Silver Cross. Silver right. Cross, baby, everybody yeah! went Silver Cross first yeah, time. Come Cross on. Time. Come on, fam. Yes, Mary Poppins, eat your heart out. Yeah. <laughs> Upgraded kind of uh, uh, three-way switch on here, um, and as you saw, all of the wizardry on the electronics. And I think we does get... that come off if you want to be better looking? Uh, yes, it does. It does because you can. Do you know how you can tell? How can you tell? See, I have the screw. You, you know, do the you little want, thing. Do you want to put it on for me? Then? I hate doing this because I always think I'm going to break it. But there you are. Oh, it's so much better looking now. Um, oh man, look at that. Loads of nice colours on these, and again, Rory will put the colours on the screen now. Um, and the, you know, so every model is available either in uh, the high performance spec or the traditional spec. 
Um, so over on my side... It's green. I the colour that is easy to see if you're yeah, a human being. Apparently so. Which we were trying to decide, is that does that make us... Is that because, genetically speaking, we are herbivores or carnivores or omnivores? You, you know, do you, are you looking for the prey in the grass or are you just trying to decide which grass you should eat? Or are you just trying to stay out of the desert and get into the forest? <laughs> um... Yeah, I decided to choose one of the more Larry colours for me. There are traditional colours in, in the classic series. So, classic 57s, a normal width, or, you know, a traditional width, I should say, neck and feel to it. No magic tuners, although we have got locking tuners, so they're sort of semi-magic. Semi-magic. <laughs> normal Les Paul heel joint. Uh, none of the electronics do anything at all, other than what they were, you know, Les Paul you know, designed them to do. Um, and it sounds nice. It's it's high output. I mean, I've got my gain, very you know, like my clean size. channel on like 11 o'clock here. So this should be, if you're watching one of the other videos we've done where we were maybe playing strats into this, this would be really clean at this point, but it does. <laughs> you know what you need, Lee? You need one I of need those uh, tuners. Mad tuners, don't you? Your semi-magic wasn't magic enough. It's because this is a fresh guitar out the box. Let's so they were asking size for the Diablo upgrade with the Necromancer. Mm -hmm. Diablo with the Necromancer. How's it's your gaming upgrade. channel going? It's going great, actually. Yeah. Good for you, yeah. man. So what I've done is I've, I've knocked the volume, actually, on both pickups down to about half, and that'll give me a nice clean... On full, I've got, you know, I'm in crunch blues kind of rock. Oh. I love Les Pauls. Obviously, that'll depend on what amp you've got. If you've got a, an amp with more headroom on the clean channel or a solid state amplifier or something like that, you'll, you probably will get cleaner tones than this. Gain pedal, which one shall I use? Plimsoll. Plimsoll. I don't know what happens with these. I don't believe in science or anything like that. I just believe that there's, believe like, science. there's like some magician at the end of the production line just goes, good sound, and that's it. And it's magic. And you <laughs> plug it into a nice amplifier and you get good sound with no pedals or anything. I like it. I believe in science. I believe in the hard work and dedication of an amazing guitar no, company. I to just believe in <laughs> No! <laughs> 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 this can stay in the video because I think this is absolutely incredible, but they found a piece of amber Mm -hmm. that had a dinosaur, a whole dinosaur's tail inside the amber. All the tendons, all the, all the muscle fibres, the, the, the vertebrae, the bones, and feathers. Jurassic Park, man. Was wrong. Jurassic Park was wrong. Dinosaurs, dinosaurs mostly had feathers. had feathers, yeah. They were well, like birds. They were basically just f***ing <laughs> scary chickens. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Back! <laughs> Magic cocks. <laughs> 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 uh, so look, anyway, these are, these are just the first two guitars. Let's jump over to the oh, yeah. other two guitars. So the classics, I should tell you how much these are. So in the in good old blighty UK, uh, you will pay anything from about 1600 up to about 2000 depending on whether you want the traditional or the high performance models. Um, may I borrow the battery from your high performance Les Paul, please, you Mr. Chapman? May. Robert Sutherland Chapman? That's my full name. We were going, why, why did we decide that we would start referring to ourselves Kenny by Wayne our full That's it, because Kenny, Kenny Wayne Shepherd. Shepherd's got a great name. He has. Boom, we're on the Boom. studios now. So the studios are the next one down in the range. So again, depending on whether you go high performance or traditional spec, expect to pay somewhere between the sort of 12 and 1500, 1600 sort of mark. This time around though, Rob's got the, um, 
basic traditional spec one and I've got the high performance one. So I can kind of give you as a, as a reference here to jump between the traditional spec neck and the high performance neck is really not, it's not like the neck that was on the 2015 high performance, which was about three or four mil wider than a traditional neck. This is like just a teeny weeny bit. Teeny weeny bit. And you don't really, I mean, you do feel a difference, but you don't really sort of go, ooh. Um, and got loads, well, actually, no, I tell a lie. So None slightly- of um, oh, Some of them, two of these, these two. Yeah, oh, have you got coil taps on yours Only as well? Only these two. So I don't know, yeah, it's weird. So the classic, the classic traditional spec doesn't have coil taps, but the studio, whether you buy the high performance or the um, traditional spec has coil taps, but my other two controls don't do, you yeah. know, I haven't got that phase reversal or anything like that. We've got 490 and 498 pickups now. Mine is the 498 plus, which is the slightly hotter one than Rob's. Um, no binding on the studio. The, the studio was kind of like in the, in the range. The studio was the, the first one that, that really kind of had all the spec that you'd you'd expect to get on a Les Paul standard, but with no binding and no um, you know much simpler colours and no flame maple tops and stuff. So it became like the working man's Les Paul, didn't it? Really, the sort of the studio because it kind of had all the tones and, and the feel without all the more bling. Affordable. Way more affordable. Yeah. So it's you know it's almost probably half the price of a, of a Les Paul standard. You got just regular tuners. Regular, regular tuners. So no locking no tuners. No magic there. No. Uh, I have sounds. magic. Sounds amazing. Do you want to go first? One? Yeah, what I need is a button I can press just back here. Ah, uh -huh, you see. Figure yourself out, yeah, but you it's see. Uh, we've got, listen, the set of sounds now. You mock. It's good. Um, obviously, if I want to, I can remove the scratch plate. I don't. Black! I don't think I've ever seen a black guitar with no scratch. Does that look cooler? I think it does actually, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it looks a lot cooler. Oh look, we've missed the dust on the back here where we've, yeah. not, where we've not dusted it underneath the scratch plate. Um, so this is yeah. So so again. One of the other things I haven't really talked about much as we've done this whole Les Paul video is there are uh, different forms of weight relief that Gibson put on the different models. So again, if you're looking for guitars that are either you know heavier or lighter. This is a lot lighter, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, have a look on the specs. So that was what made me think I'd pick these up and th these have got the ultra modern weight mm. relief. So they're like the Swiss cheese all over. Um, but there is a traditional weight relief and a and non weight relieved as well. So if you look look at the spec and decide, you know, if you want if, if you go for a guitar that has no weight relief, expect it to be heavy. And if you go for a guitar with ultra modern weight relief, expect it to be at the lighter end. So mine sounds it is on. Mine sounds lack like, did you do shall I do the coil taps on mine? Do it, bro. sound hotter to you, these yeah. pickups, than the classic 57s? I think they, they have a I very they different are. sound. Yeah, they yeah. are. They're, they're, they've got a more pronounced sort of upper mid-range, haven't mm. they? That's sort of like that more cocked wild barkier. kind of... Yeah, barkier, that's the right sound. Bark! Less so on the treble pickup. That's true. Really different sounding. We should probably do the final jam with one of us on one of these and one on the, on yeah, the studio. Yeah. I would definitely say if you want that more aggressive, gainy sounding Les Paul and you're trying to decide between a classic and a studio, studio's studio. probably got that 
that yeah. sort of thing. Um, if you're looking maybe more of a bluesy thing, maybe the classic. But um, so there's your basic sounds. Um, and I don't think there are many color options on the studio. Although again, I'm sure Rory will flash them all across the screen now. Certainly the wine red and, and the ebony have been in the catalog for a long time. I like the ebony. The ebony works with the chrome a lot of people have been saying that they're not a big fan of these chrome pickups around on the HPs. I think it's a, I think it's a grower, not a shower. But also, yeah. I think that really visually sits in many different mm. genres. I think it's where cool. these chrome pickups surrounds are looking out of places on the more traditional colours. Yeah, you know, the bursts and stuff. It looks Whereas, all right on that. Yeah, I think it looks smart on this. It's more modern. And and again, people seem to have just stopped mentioning the fact that there's no poker chip on these guitars anymore. Well, just sort of gone, depends on where you look. This is where you are. Some people mention it all day long. Oh, really? And some people don't. Yes. Some people have better things to worry about. Yeah. The other thing I should mention as well, again, is that you get a full hard case with any of these models here. If you buy a traditional spec guitar, I don't know why I'm pointing at that one, traditional spec guitar, either the classic or the studio, you'll get your wooden kind of shaped traditional Gibson case. And if you buy a high performance one, you'll get the aluminium um, mm. like super deluxe monster case, which are insanely expensive. I mean, I'm, not, I'm sure Gibson inflate the price of the cases to buy them as spares, um, but it's something mad, like 500 quid, the, the case wow. that goes with the, it's just like, seriously. I mean, even the regular Gibson case is about 200 quid. Well, it's so. because if you're gonna ship cases over, you've got a lot of, it's just your shipping Well, we, found, we found that, didn't we? Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's almost more expensive to ship a case over than it is to ship a guitar, because yeah. it's just a bigger box with less in it. Yes, but, it's crazy, which is um, why not very many guitar companies sell cases separately. You know? Yeah, and when they do, they're a bit dearer. So look, let's jam out. Do you want to stick with that guitar and I'll go back to the classic? Yeah, man. Tell me about Rory. So he uh, edits videos. Rory's awesome. Yeah.